We were out running errands yesterday and everywhere we went, all anyone was talking about is how horrible modern society is these days and Las Vegas. Las Vegas was on the TV in every waiting area that we saw, every corner that had a small TV in it that was on. It was talked about on every radio station and even when we tried to change the channel, DJs were saying we should stop what we were doing and turn on the news to watch the coverage of Las Vegas. What we were told happened is a 64-year-old multi-millionaire in real estate, for reasons no one knows that have not been explained, brought a cartoonish number of 23 guns into the Mandalay Bay Casino over the course of several days, and on Sunday night knocked out two windows on the 32nd floor and despite being in a casino, which is a building with its own mini fusion center, in Las Vegas, which is the American equivalent of London in how many CCTV cameras it has, this man was somehow able to shoot down at a crowd of thousands of people attending a country music festival for over an hour, and no one was able to get into the room to stop him for 72 minutes. This is the same exact casino, by the way, that if the power even goes out, like it did for 40 minutes one day last year, security was able to put the entire place on full lockdown quickly within moments. And all day long, every news outlet, every channel, everything, just repeated the same gory details over and over about the terror, the screaming, the running, and the blood, the blood, the blood. I must have heard that a brainwashing level number of times. Which, if we're to believe that nearly 60 people died and over 500 were hurt, is really dehumanizing to any potential victims who may have been involved. Leftist outlets had sickos saying things like conservative victims like those found at country music festivals don't deserve our sympathy. And far-right blowhards were attempting to push the ISIS homegrown lone wolf terror agenda. But the more that the details began to emerge on this, and there are some really strange things that have come out in the wake of this, the more we began asking ourselves, Ki bono? Who benefits? Was there anyone waiting in the wings who benefits from such a senseless event? And as sick as it seems to say that, unfortunately we live in a country and now a globally connected society that has been run on false flag terror and the Hegelian dialectic since at the very least World War II. At least. We have people in leadership positions like Rahm Emanuel saying things like, never let a good crisis go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. So when you see a bunch of red flag details start coming out that don't make any sense, and I mean no sense at all, and you start asking yourself, could this be a false flag? Always ask Kibono, and then work backwards from there. And of all the bizarre stuff coming out of Vegas, the minutia of which we could debate all day long. One of the most compelling answers to our question was apparently posted on 4chan on, of all days, September 11th, just a few weeks ago. This is a thread called, if anything happens tomorrow, it's Mossad false flag level alpha. And I'm sure every single year on September 11th, you will see a post with the same warning or a similar warning just by default ever since 9-11 on this website. I'm just guessing. But this year, you had some pretty interesting and specific responses that make way too much sense. I was able to carbon date this page back to its creation date, and it was apparently created 235959 on September 10th, one second before midnight, September 11th. So somebody had a message they definitely wanted to put out there. And down here in this thread is a post from John, I'm sure that's his real name. He says, Look, I feel bad for some of you on this website, so I'll let you in on a little secret. If you live in Las Vegas or Henderson, stay inside tomorrow. Don't go anywhere where there are large groups of people. Also, if you see three black vans parked next to each other, immediately leave the area. You're welcome. And people started debating what that meant. And he comes back and says, it's called the High Incident Project. They want to make the American public think that places with extremely high security, like Las Vegas, aren't safe. 
They're trying to create more regulations. You'll see laws proposed in the next few years to put up more metal detectors and other security devices. Media and politicians will be saying places with lots of police need even more police. I can't guarantee anything will happen tomorrow, but Las Vegas is on their minds. Then he comes back one last time and says... If their plan is successful, State of Nevada will pass a law in the future making all casinos have mandatory metal detectors and backscatter machines. Soon after, a federal law will be passed to put these machines in universities, high schools, federal buildings, you name it. OSI Systems and Chertoff are the main producers of these machines. Sometime around 2020, Chertoff and OSI will merge into a single company. After they merge, the owners will sell off all their stock and make billions in profit. Mr. Chertoff has been in contact with Sheldon Adelson. Mr. Adelson will become a huge sponsor of these machines, and he will be the first to put them in his casinos when the law passes. This is my last message for now. Don't expect me to return anytime soon. If you will recall, back when the underwear bomber happened, Chertoff, who had been Department of Homeland Security Secretary from 2005 to 2009, by then he was running the Chertoff Group, which is a private security consulting agency. And after the underwear bomber happened, he came out and was a really big proponent publicly promoting the rapid scan, naked body scanners, the backscatter x-ray machines that they put into all of the airports. He was pushing all of that. And then it came out that one of his main clients was OSI. OSI owns RapiScan, the maker of the machines. OSI, by the way, being run by Deepak Chopra, not not Oprah's Chopra, another guy with the same name, who is considered a quote-unquote significant donor to the Democratic Party to the point that he was able to accompany President Obama on a trip to India in 2010 to promote trade between India and the U.S. That's the level that that guy is. So you have a lot of big players involved in OSI, Rapiscan, and of course the Chertoff Group. On top of that, James Murin, the CEO of MGM International, which owns the Mandalay Bay Casino, also just so happens to be a sitting member of the Department of Homeland Security's National Infrastructure Advisory Council. And he actually sits on a group called the Critical Infrastructure Security and Resilience Research and Development Working Group, and they write reports like this one, where they talk about things that they can do to help get legislation passed and regulations to put in security technology infrastructure, such as, oh, I don't know, x-ray backscatter machines, into places, how to make that affordable for shareholders, which would be the people who own casinos who would have to buy and purchase these machines, and also they consider things like public acceptance of such technologies. That's the kind of stuff they talk about in their meetings as a member of the Homeland Security National Infrastructure Advisory Council, just so happens to be the same guy who is the CEO of the company that owns the hotel where this happened. So all this was predicted and it's eerie. And what makes sense about it is the president has these people as his peers. He's got a tower over there on Vegas Strip. He's met with these people publicly and privately. He knows all these casino owners. And Sheldon Adelson in particular sponsored the Las Vegas debate in the last GOP debate cycle. The day before the debate, Trump met with Adelson at his hotel where the debate was being held, met privately with most, if not all, of the candidates on stage as they basically begged for his money and backing as one of the biggest kingmakers in the Republican Party. And Trump also met with them. And that night at the debate, while we don't know exactly what they said, that night at the debate, all the candidates hopped to to see who could be the biggest and boldest at talking about counter security measures, how they would take on terrorism, whether or not they would launch new wars to defend the country and other related matters. And Trump came out very strongly that night for an anti-terrorism administration that picks up right where George Bush left off. And you've got Sheldon Adelson quietly, you know, with his cloaked hands, glad that they took this script. So the fact that you're now seeing a possible false flag incident and new security measures starting on the Las Vegas Strip pretty much echoes what happened in the debate and the connections that are there. What's even, I think, creepier about it is after a mass shooting in this country, you always have calls for gun control. We're seeing that 
but not to the same degree we normally do. Actually, what we're seeing this time is a lot of talk in every mainstream news outlet about how vulnerable hotel security is everywhere. So here's one from the New York Times about the Las Vegas shooting underscores hotel security choices. Here's one from Fox News about how hotels take new look at security after Las Vegas, but will customers sacrifice their privacy? And it just goes on and on. And every single one of these articles, they quote the same guy. It's this guy, Jim Stover, and he says, the hospitality industry hasn't gotten its act together in terms of anti-terrorism. It's not going to be pushed. It has to be pulled. It's not going to be pushed. It has to be pulled. All over the place, they're saying this. You even had an op-ed in the Huffington Post where a lady straight up said, do U.S. hotels need metal detectors? And it shows a picture of the backscatter x-rays, the naked body scanners. And she goes through and makes this argument, and it's a terrible argument. She says things like, metal detectors and security screening are routine at the entrances to hotels in many countries, such as Egypt and Jordan. Yes, because we need to start setting our sights on making America more like the Middle East, right? But it only takes 30 seconds longer than walking through a revolving door. And we all adjusted to the security screenings at U.S. airports, although we may grumble from time to time if the lines are long and we're racing to catch a plane. But TSA security screenings have become part of the experience of flying in the U.S., so we might as well accept this, too. That's what she's saying. Perhaps it's time to make it safer to stay at a hotel in the U.S. by installing metal detectors and x-ray machines in hotel lobbies. But you know, just like with the airports, it's not going to stop there. In fact, the controversy over backscatter machines went up a notch when people started questioning the health and safety of such machines, and they ended up having to take a bunch of them out of the airports. And those machines are just sitting around waiting for someone to use them. So why not get all the hotels and casinos on board to stick them right in? And what do you know, but just the very next day, they're now reporting in Bloomberg that guests at the Wynn are being scanned in a glimpse of Las Vegas's future. That is how fast this has already begun. Because, again, the guy brought a cartoonish number of guns, supposedly 23 guns, into his room. More guns than he would possibly need. It's just over the top. The whole thing is over the top. And this is going to be the solution. Less freedom. Do you want to know how blatantly, transparently obvious this agenda is? The next day, former Homeland Security official Chad Sweet, who just so happens to also be the co-founder and CEO of the Chertoff Group, went on CNBC, and not only did he say that in a free society, there are no ways to eliminate security risks. In a free society, there's no way to eliminate this kind of risk. So what he really means is we need to be less free if we want to be safe. We need to give up our liberty for temporary security. He was also pushing, guess what? But there are ways, as you said, to potentially mitigate the risk. Uh, in addition to intelligence sharing, you can also do a number of uh, steps to per establish a secure perimeter using uh, various types of screening technology. That's right, the x-ray technologies. Already, not even 24 hours later. So I guess the guy in the 4chan group just so happens to have had a crystal ball. That is what I call eerily prescient. I guess some people don't remember. I remember it like it's yesterday. This is all the stuff they were building up to. They were telling us Homeland Security was going to be pre-screening passengers, every train, every plane, and eventually every car as well. They had mobile x-ray scanners deployed in the streets. They've got extremely sophisticated, potentially dangerous, very expensive equipment being rolled out everywhere, but the public was fed up with it. Hence, the Obama administration focused on the gun control side of the issue for years. Now that the administrations are back to Republican, here we go again with all these security measures and better look closely at what's happening. Not everything is what it appears to be. So, that's what happened. Now, whether that's a false flag of somebody posting that on September 11th as a little ha-ha gotcha game, I don't know. But the fact is... It makes way too much sense. Hey, maybe Trump will be the first one to put it in at his hotel. Why not? Because this is what they're getting ready. They're already pushing. It's been, it's been 
literally a day, and they are already scanning people. They're already doing this. And like the poster said, this is just going to be the beginning. Because to get us to the fully automated minority report level of society that we're supposed to be living in in the future, there's going to have to be backscatter machines and all kinds of technology everywhere. That's the only way to get us there. But they know that they can't just institute it and put it in. They have to socially engineer everybody to accept it. And one way they can do that is false flag terror. That is how they get people to accept more and more intrusion and encroachment on their privacy and on their person. And that is why every time one of these events happens, you have to ask, what's the, who, who stands to benefit? And there are some people in some very high places who stand to make an awful lot of money off of taking away a little bit more of our freedom. Meanwhile, these machines have been debunked already. There are people that have done videos all over YouTube. They can sneak all kinds of things past these machines. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in a society where I have to be x-rayed every time I want to go into the grocery store and get broccoli. Every time I leave my house everywhere I go. That's not freedom. That's not even humane. But that's the reality they're trying to push here. Where are they going to stop once they start doing this? Where does it end? 